Hello, this is your instructor, Teresa Pelkey. Welcome to our Web 2.0 class. The Internet began in 1969 as ARPANET, the first computer network which started out as, out as a military project under President Eisenhower. It became the backbone for the present Internet. TCPIP was developed at this time. It tells how the packets of information are sent from one computer to another. The IP address identifies the computer and this protocol is still used to present day. In the 70s to 80s, scientific and educational networks were added to the original Internet. Some of the services they used were for mail, FTP, Gopher, and Telnet. Everything was text-based at this time. There were no images. Many of these services still remain today, along with many of the original networks. The World Wide Web came in 1979-80. to 80. It was developed by Tim Berners-Lee as a scientific project. Tim Berners-Lee wrote the HTML language and the HTTP protocol, which are the basis for the Internet and the Web today. At this time, everything was still text-based. There were no images. The first graphical browser, which means images, was developed at the uh, Supercomputer Center, University of Illinois, by Mark Andreessen in 1994. This browser was called Mosaic, and this is a screenshot of what it looked like. And actually, you can see some of the features that are very similar to the present browser that we're still using today. There is a plaque in Illinois in, to commemorate this historic event, the first graphical browser. The Netscape browser was developed a year later and it remained the predominant browser through 1999. It also was developed by Mark Andreessen. It was much easier to use and it consequently was responsible for the popularity of the web. And here we see um, a screenshot of the original Netscape Navigator 1.0. Other browsers were developed from 1996 to the present. One difference from Netscape, they were free. They were continually updated, the updates were free, and many of them were open source, meaning that individual developers could write applications that work with these browsers. So this was a turning point in the way that software was produced, which is very characteristic of Web 2.0 applications today. The browser and the server communicate with a protocol, HTTP, which stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. And you see that the web addresses are prefaced by this protocol. How this works, when you enter a URL in the browser, a request is made to the web server. The web server retrieves the request, sends it back to the browser. Now, while this is going on, the browser has to sit and wait for a response. And this can be very slow. The early web was very slow. We had slow connections. Our computer processors were not as powerful as they are today. And it took a while, once you clicked on a link, for the server to send back the page. The language of the web page is written in what is called HTML, the Hypertext Markup Language. It is a text-based markup language. It is manually written. It is processed, interpreted by the browser, and it is static. By static, we mean that 
it is written, what is written is written. It doesn't change. So we see some of the drawbacks to Web 1.0. The connections were slow. Pages were slow to reload, and if we needed to refresh them, they had to make a trip to the server and back again. The HTML language was static, meaning once a page was loaded, that, was, that page could never change. Everything was processed in the browser, which had some drawbacks, because the browser really wasn't as powerful as um, a computer program would be. Faster internet speeds, connectivity everywhere, almost, cheaper, faster hardware, and the fact that computers are now available almost everywhere, gave rise to, to the developments that led up to Web 2.0. The fact that we could access the web faster and easier made a difference in the development of the applications. New web languages emerged. These web languages allowed for interactivity in the web page, such as immediate page refresh without having to wait for the server to respond. And now we could process on the web server in addition to being interpreted on the browser, which meant that we had ability to do some powerful processing. Some of these languages, JavaScript, CSS, Cascading Style Sheets, the Document Object Model, Dynamic HTML, XML, and H, which all worked with the original HTML, which was the language of the web page. So we have some new technologies being developed, which worked with HTML, which enabled the web page to be a lot more interactive and productive. Another very important technology, AJAX, asynchronous JavaScript and XML, which is responsible for a lot of the applications such as Google Maps, and also Flash, Macromedia, uh, Adobe Flash, which is also uh, called a rich internet application, which is very popular with YouTube and other uh, video sharing programs. AJAX and Flash really enabled the technologies that we have in the Web 2.0 applications today. Database integration, another technology that allows for the dynamic retrieval of real-time information. No longer were we dependent on static web pages that were written and then stayed that way. Now the browser could post a request to the server. The server could go out and contact the database and bring in new information. Uh, blogs, for an example, very frequently updated information, um, Google searches, uh, news sites. Um, we were no longer dependent on retrieving information that was written quite a while ago. Now we could retrieve information that was current and up to the minute. So let's take a look at how some of these technologies um, enabled, uh, looked in the web page today. Here's a very popular website. And as I put my cursor over a link, we see a tabbed menu. Instant changes. Very interactive. The page does not need to wait to be refreshed. Notice the URL doesn't change. We can go out and watch a video. We can, as my cursor goes over, we can get a little preview of what's next here on the galleries. Everything changes automatically. Up here we see our RSS feed. These are the types of interactions that we did not have in Web 2.0, in Web 1.0, that is taken for granted in the web that we use today. The dot-com crash, which is supposed to have happened on March 10, 2000, 
played a big role in the development of Web 2.0 in that um, we looked at the sites that survived Amazon.com, eBay, and looking back and examining what made these sites survive. Why did some of them um, go out of business? Why did these survive? And by looking back, we see that this crash kind of made a trans indicated a transition point from the web 1.0 type of sites to the new sites that were soon to develop to the web 2.0 that we know today. So one of the most significant things that we see in these sites that did survive the crash, the users had a voice and the applications were built around a community. Two very predominant characteristics of the beginning of the web 2.0 breed of applications. We see a new software model being developed, um, the, the term collective intelligence, using the collective intelligence as a basis for application development, um, and applications that were based upon user participation that improves with usage, users. Another trend that we see is that these services were free, just like the browsers were free, a lot of the new Web 2.0 applications provided free services to us. So a shift in thinking was occurring over the last decade, which had an influence on why we're using the web and the type of web applications that developed. We have new devices, which gave us new ways to use the web, and these new devices were essentially wireless which meant that we could access the web anytime and anywhere. We now began to use the web to share with the advent of digital cameras that made upload, taking a photograph and ultimately uploading it very easy to our video cameras. Web applications began to develop to take use of these devices. We started using the web to communicate, to collaborate, to contribute, to publish. It was no longer just to search for information, but it was to become a part of the web, to participate. And all of the Web 2.0 applications essentially are built around us, the user, and participation.